bring those out over the course of this year and next. And it's a continuous strategic planning process. We have a strategic planning committee. It's inclusive. We meet every quarter with the 10 member organizations and we're going to take our approach so that we become a major force in American life. We have an internship program. You remember Sarah Palin, she made fun of uh, Obama as a community organizer. Well, our internship program is our community organizers. We just started with a new intern just last week in Washington, D.C. There's a young woman who is the type of young woman that we can see who will run for the city council, the legislature, and Congress in the future. We're going to develop these future leaders with our internship program. It's critically important that we do. At our summit, we had Sally Quinn. I don't know how many of you know Sally Quinn. She runs the Washington Post on Faith column. She's also the wife of Ben Bradley, who was President Kennedy's uh, best friend. And uh, Sally Quinn said something that, uh, with all the many positive things she said, she said, well, I don't think an atheist will ever be elected in my lifetime. And as much as I admire Sally Quinn, who's a non-believer herself, uh, I say no. I say if you're under 40, heck, I think if you look under 40, you can, <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. Just like I remember specifically five, six years ago, someone saying to me, I said, oh, a black person can be elected president. They said, that's absolutely impossible. It will never happen in our lifetime. So if you find the right black candidate, yeah, they will. Yeah, we will. And I say the same for us. Will we create the base? Will we create the organizational base? And then you wait for the right person to rise up. First, it's the state legislature, the city council, the school boards. Then you move on to mayors and Congress. But you build that base, and we can succeed, and we can succeed in a generation if we stick with an entrepreneurial innovation culture in this movement. And that's what we are going to get done. Next is we broaden and deepen our financial base. We have to raise money. Less than 10% of our money comes from our 10 member organizations. It all the rest, all the other 90 plus percent comes from individuals. And one of the privileges I got as the executive director of Secular Coalition is I got to pick the names of our society levels, our gift levels in our organization. And one that I picked because of sentimental reasons for me is Elizabeth Cady Stanton, who said, and I quote, the Bible and the church have been the greatest stumbling blocks in the way of women's emancipation. I served 10 years in the Maine legislature with my primary interest being women's rights and children's issues. I had a 100% voting record with the Maine Women's Lobby, lobby every session, 100% for 10 years. And what did I see evolving in my own mind over those years was that at the root of opposition to women's rights, at the root of opposition to inclusion of gay Americans, at the root of many, interestingly and sadly, uh, child protection issues, was the religious right working all the time against values in which I believe. And as a politician, think about what it feels when you really think you're sincerely speaking for your values and you've got someone pointing at you in the committee room telling you that you're immoral because you believe in a woman's right to choose or because I think that a gay person's private life is, is, is none of my business. But yet I was told, and the word moral was sort of taken to imply that my viewpoints were somehow the not moral viewpoints. So Elizabeth Cady Stanton means a lot to me is uh, Thomas Paine on the back says, my religion is to do good. I put that on my business card. That's one of our, our gift levels. Because our inspiration is real but imperfect people. Elizabeth Cady Stanton wasn't perfect. Thomas Jefferson sure wasn't perfect. Madison wasn't perfect. Twain, but they were inspirations. They were t more inspirations because they had their flaws, they had their faults, but they are real inspirations. So that's what our society gift levels are about. About what the best of what the human species has to offer. People like Lenin, people like Twain. That's where we're headed. And those ideals lead me to our vision. When I say we have our secular decade plan to get us to 2020, it is based on a vision of the future of what America will be like. And here's that vision. I want to give you 10 points of what the United States is going to be like when we achieve our goals. One, our military will serve all Americans, religious and non-religious, with no hint of bias and no fundamentalist extremism coloring our military decisions at home or abroad. That's principle one. Principle number two, any federal or state-funded program 
whether offering services domestic or foreign, which relates to reproductive health or intimate sexual decisions, will be based on science and public health, not based on religious bias, the denigration of women, or sexual minorities. Number three, health care professionals have an obligation to choose life and health and healthcare professionals of all categories must choose to fulfill their professional duties and their professional oath without religious bias and in respectful service to the legitimate needs of vulnerable patients they serve or they must find another job. Four, discrimination based on religion will never occur in employment with use of government funds, never. Five, maybe this is five, <laughs> marriage can be defined by any religion, as that religion so chooses, for ceremonies within their congregations. But government will never impose a religious bias on the statutory definition of marriage, never. Six, laws passed for the common good, such as zoning laws and environmental laws, shall treat all people and organizations equally, regardless of religion or lack thereof. And sadly today, we have to lobby to make that the case, because it's not the case now. Seven, America's youth shall never be subjected to religious bias in education. If there is one penny of government funds, there shall not be one iota of religious bias or propaganda. Number eight, our Congress and legislatures shall be representative of religious people and non-religious people, and there will be no political bias against candidates who are secular Americans. Nine, there will be one consistent standard pertaining to the health and welfare of children. Religious fundamentalists can impose whatever they choose on their own bodies and on their own lives, but the health and the safety of children will hold to one consistent standard regardless of the religion of the child's parents or the child's school or of any child care center. Children are not property to be used as props in some form of religious bias or sacrifice. Number 10, medical progress and scientific progress dedicated to the health and progress of our fellow citizens shall never be impeded by religious bias. And let me linger on this last, this 10th point. Scientific progress, 3,000 years ago in the time of the Greeks, 250 years ago in the time of Jefferson, and 3,000 years from now, will be based most significantly on our reverence for our enlightenment values. Evidence guiding our conclusions, compassion guiding our actions and our choices. When stem cell research is betrayed, our fellow human beings are betrayed. When science is betrayed, the human spirit at its very best is betrayed. This will take work from us. As Mumford and Sons says, it will take all the courage you have left. That's what we need to bring forward. As Helen Keller, a great non-believer said, life is either a great adventure or it is nothing at all. I believe in this adventure. I believe in our secular decade plan. I believe that if we get organized and bring our plan into the future, that we can not only transform this movement, we can transform the United States of America and serve an important patriotic mission at a pivotal time in American history. This is the time of maximum danger. I'm writing a book now that's going to come out next year called Attack of the Theocrats. And I am guaranteeing you that at no time in American history have we seen a higher percentage of theocrats who are holding high elective office. It is up to us. We have an obligation not to sit back. We have an obligation not to say, oh, woe is us, we're too small, we're too disorganized. It is time to get organized. And that is what the Secular Decade Plan is about. I pledge to you that I am devoting the rest of my life to this cause. And I am asking every single one of you in this room to devote a part of your day, to devote a part of your time, to devote a part of your resources to this effort consistently so that we can change this country. I thank you, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Thanks, John. Sure. Do Q&A real quick. Uh, two things real quick. Fred's computer crashed. That's why we lost Fred, uh, unfortunately. And number two, can I see a show of hands of who's interested in going to lunch? Yeah, I'd love to talk to everybody at lunch. And... My hands are...
<laughs> yeah, I have one big favor to ask you guys before we get to questions. And this is, I will be in trouble if I go back to my little office at 17 and K and they don't see, as they can monitor you know, on our website, a bunch of people who've signed up for our free action alerts. Doesn't cost you a dime. You just go to our website. If you've got a smartphone, you can do it as you're sitting here. And then you find out what's happening in Washington every single time there's an issue that relates to separation of church and state, acceptance and inclusion of non-theistic Americans. You just sign up on our website and you get it. Now, there is a donation page there, but that's up to you. <laughs> but at least for free, please sign up. And if 100% of you do that, it will make my day. Questions, it looks good, although I will note, I am happy to answer questions with a burger and beer also. Yeah. But raise your hands. Be sure to repeat the question in the microphone. Great. Everybody raise your hands who has questions, and I'm going to give everybody numbers. Just put your hands up if you've got a question. Okay. And you just, all right, so I'm going to say the number. You're going to remember the number because I have a terrible memory. So one, two, three, four, five. Di oh, six. Sorry. So you guys have to remember your numbers. I'm not going to remember. All right. Fantastic. One. One. Okay. Uh, you did a lot about members of Congress and the position and how yep. pressure here and now. I belong to an organization called Citizens for Global, I guess it says of Global Change. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they put out a report card just before a congressional election, and they rate members of Congress how supportive they were to mm -hmm. issues uh, resolving these conflicts around the world through more than unilateral action. Right. So uh, that's what I'm asking. Are you going to put out a report card, send something to people, indicating the, where they stand and how you rate them? Yeah, the question is, uh, do, uh, secular for America, do we have a report card on members of Congress? And the answer is yes. Uh, we did one last cycle, and we will do one in the upcoming uh, cycle. You probably won't see that until the beginning of next year, but as the election season starts, you'll have a report card from Secular Coalition uh, for America on members of Congress and where they stand on separation of church and state, acceptance and inclusion of non-theistic Americans. Usually it's a limited number of votes. A lot of times these things don't come to a floor vote, so the numbers of votes monitored are relatively few. Uh, oft times, that's be, you know, when you've got Speaker Boehner, a lot of our issues are not going to get to uh, the floor. But we have a lot of opportunities with members in the Senate and with members in the House who want to uh, point out the inequities. So we've been having a lot of success in that regard as well. So that's one. Now number two. Now number two. Okay, just one question, or two questions. Freedom from Religion Foundation is a member? They are not. We would love to have them join us. Yeah, we have, uh, you can look at it, our list. In fact, excuse me one second, I'm not attached to it. Okay. Um, I think I've got in here, yes, if you don't, I don't know if I have enough for the entire group, but if you don't mind distributing these among everyone, I'd appreciate it. And you can look, and there's listed our 10 member organizations. Uh, but uh, most of the major, not all, but most of the major organizations have joined our coalition. We'd love to have FFRF join our coalition. That would be terrific. Lifetime member, so I will bring it up. Oh, so that would be wonderful. But my question is, how do we get rid of the um, faith-based charities? Like the so-called faith-based initiatives? Well, we're disappointed, and I've been public about this. If you go to YouTube, you can Google, you know, Sean Fairclough Secular Coalition, and there's a YouTube video about that topic specifically. But briefly, and the question is about getting rid of faith-based initiatives. Uh, unfortunately, Though President Obama has done some positive things, he mentioned us in his inaugural, he mentioned us in Cairo when he gave his speech uh, uh, to Arab communities in Cairo. However, on July 1, 2008, uh, President Obama pledged during the campaign that he would make sure through executive order that there would not be proselytizing and discrimination in so-called faith-based on his pledge. And what makes it even more unfortunate is if, uh, if President Obama could offer the explanation that he had to get it through Congress, 
And he'd be right because with Speaker Boehner's House, that would be unlikely to pass. But he doesn't need Congress. All he needs is an executive order that is the stroke of a pen. He doesn't need anybody else but Barack Obama. And so we are lobbying them and pushing them. I'll be frank with you that, unfortunately, we have not seen much action from the administration. But I think partly 